Hi again, everybody. So today we are going to be talking about the medulla oblongata. And so if you recall, on the medulla oblongata, as we've been going through the brain stem, what we've been saying is that this is our brain. This was the midbrain here. We had the pond. And then at the bottom, we had the medulla oblongata. And then if you recall, we also had the cerebellum in the back there. So this is the midbrain, which we did a video on. This is the pond, which we did a video on. And this is the medulla oblongata. So let's take a look real quick at some of the things about the medulla oblongata. So the first thing about the medulla oblongata is you got to figure anything that's coming up from the spinal cord and going up into the brain has got to pass, go past the medulla oblongata. Just like anything coming down from the brain going to the body has also got to go past the medulla oblongata. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that in the medulla oblongata, we have ascending and descending tracks, okay? The other thing about the medulla oblongata is this is an area where a lot of nerves cross over to. So if you remember, we were talking about our fasciculus cuneatus and our fasciculus gracilis, we said that they were going to synapse here, and then they cross to the opposite side. So we're going to get some nerves that come up and cross to the opposite side, and then continue up to the brain. But if you also remember, we talked about, we had nerves coming from the brain that would actually come down the, the brain stem, get to med medulla oblongata, and then some of those nerves would cross over to the other side, or maybe even continue down, or a combination of both. So the other thing about the medulla oblongata is that some nerves actually cross here. Okay? The other thing about the medulla oblongata, like we were just talking about the fasciculus cuneatus and the fasciculus gracilis, they have nuclei or, the, or they synapse in the medulla oblongata. So they have nuclei in here, so we have the cuneatus and gracilis. nuclei in here. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, and the one other thing is the medulla oblongata is also basically where the brain or the brain stem is going to attach to our spinal cord. So our spinal cord will be right here. Now there's no distinguishing marker that tells us you're in the spinal cord. It's just kind of a transition. So we're going to say the medulla oblongata connects the brain stem, or if you want to say the brain, you can to the spinal cord. Brain stem to, I'm gonna just put SC for spinal cord. So these are some of the things about the medulla oblongata. Let's look at some of the functions now of this. And as we start to go through this, you're gonna to start to notice um, this is gonna to start to make sense. So some of the functions of the medulla oblongata is it's responsible for regulating blood pressure. It plays a role in our respiration rate, how much we breathe. Okay, it also plays a role in our heart rate. And it plays a role in digestion. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how uh, the medulla oblongata does these things here. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to redraw this. I just want to redraw it bigger. So once again, I'm going to just draw my midbrain really small right here. I'm going to draw the pond right there, and then I want to draw my medulla oblongata is going to be right there. So let's go down just a little bit more. So if you recall when we were talking about the midbrain, which like we said is up in here, we said in the midbrain we had cranial nerve number three. This was called our oculomotor nerve. And what we said about the oculomotor nerve is it's basically responsible for controlling the eyes and looking up, looking down, looking medially, 
um, looking up and out, the pupil constriction, we said it holds open the eyelid, and we also said it plays a role in near vision. So that was our ocular motor nerve. And then we said right below that, we had another uh, nuclei for our cranial nerve that was up here in the midbrain, and that was cranial nerve number four, and we called this the trochlear nerve. And we said the trochlear nerve is basically controls the superior oblique muscle, and it basically pulls the eye down and out. Then we went into the pons, and in the pons we said we had cranial nerve number five, which we called the trigeminal nerve. And we said the trigeminal nerve basically does sensation to the face. It has three branches. It does sensation to the face, and it basically did the motor of the, um, the muscles of mastication, so you could chew. Then, if you recall, when we were talking about the midbrain also, we talked about cranial nerve number six. And we said in cranial nerve number six, this was our abducens. And basically, your abducens nerve moved the eye laterally. And we talked about how it worked with the third cranial nerve to move our eyes back and forth. Because we need this move the eyes medially, that moves them laterally. So it's, this one's going lateral, this one's coming medial, and vice versa. Then we talked about the seventh cranial nerve, which we said was the facial nerve. And we said that basically the facial nerve plays several different roles in uh, moving muscles of the face and um, taste the anterior two thirds of the tongue um, and uh, some other things too. So we talked about the facial nerve. And then we talked about the auditory or the vestibular cochlear nerve, which was cranial nerve eight. And we basically said this one is responsible for hearing and for our balance. So now, now we are down into the medulla oblongata. So I'm just gonna draw a line across this real quick so we can see where we are. And this is the medulla oblongata. So now, if that was cranial nerve eight, the next one coming up is going to be cranial nerve number nine. And cranial nerve number nine is known as our glossal pharyngeal nerve. Okay, it's our glossal pharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve number nine. So here's what we said that this did. Remember if we said the facial nerve does taste to the anterior two thirds of the tongue, the glossal pharyngeal does taste to the posterior one third of the tongue. Okay, so it's gonna do taste to the posterior one third of the tongue. The other thing that, we, uh, that it does is it controls muscles so you can swallow. So it's going to help you swallow by controlling swallowing muscles. Okay. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to play a role in um, the salivary gland, the parotid salivary gland, which is up by your ear. And if you remember, we said the facial nerve basically does the other salivary glands, the, uh, the other salivary glands that you have. So we have the, saliv the parotid salivary gland is going to be controlled by the glossal pharyngeal. The other thing that this is going to do is this is going to monitor your blood. So it's going to monitor the gas that's basically in your blood. It's going to look at the, uh, the pH of your blood, the oxygen content of your blood, and the carbon dioxide content of your blood. So what will happen is if we get, start to get too much of one of these, it will, it will affect our breathing rate, right? So that way we can, we can balance those out a little bit more. The other thing that this is going to do is it monitors blood pressure. Okay, so it's gonna play a role in monitoring blood pressure. So that's the glossal pharyngeal nerve. And then below the glossal pharyngeal nerve, we have another one, this is a big one. And this is called our vagus nerve. Now, it's not like Las Vegas, right? It's felt a little, little bit differently. So this is cranial nerve 10. And 
It's the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve basically is going to be sensory to the inside of our ear canal. All right, it's also going to be responsible for taste, um, the taste buds that are in the back of your throat and also in your esophagus, which is the tube that goes from your throat down to your stomach. So taste for the pharynx, which is your throat and the esophagus. Okay, so it's gonna do, do those things. And then it basically does sensory and motor for internal organs after that. So most of the time you won't feel these because they don't go up to the cerebrum. And then for when your food is trying to pass through your body, like your esophagus will contract, your stomach will contract, um, we call it peristalsis in the intestines where the muscles will contract and move everything along. So this is gonna play a role in sensory and motor throughout the body. And it's also going to uh, go to your heart. So this, this nerve actually starts here in the brainstem and then travels all the way down basically to your rear end. So it plays sensory and motor throughout the body. Okay? The next one is, now that's cranial nerve number 10. The next one is going to be cranial nerve number 11. Okay, and cranial nerve number 11, if we call this the accessory nerve. Some books call it the spinal accessory nerve. Okay. And basically what this is going to do is it, it's going to help with speaking. It's going to control um, some of the muscles around your voice box. So it helps control your vocal cords, right? And it helps with speech. It's going to also help swallowing. So if you, if you remember, we were saying that basically this helps with digestion. And then the other thing it's going to do is it controls the, the muscles of your neck called the sternocleidomastoid, which basically comes down across like this and down onto your clavicle and your trapezius. So the muscles that turn your head or dip your head or make you look down or shrug your shoulders, that's going to be the accessory or spinal accessory. So, um, it controls muscles that help you shrug and turn your head and look down. All right, so that's going to be the accessory. So that's another function of the medulla oblongata. And then last but not least, we have um, our hypoglossal nerve. So I'm going to write this over here before I draw an arrow to it. So cranial nerve number 12 is known as the hypoglossal nerve. By the way, the, the term um, glossal means tongue. Okay, so hypo means it's under the tongue. And basically what this is, is these are the tongue muscles. Um, so we can, we can move our tongue, consciously move our tongue. Like if I asked you to stick your tongue out, that would be this nerve here. So it controls tongue muscles. So if we take a look real quick, let me just draw my nucleus here. I'm going to have it coming down like this, okay? So if we take a look, like we said, the medulla is going to control blood pressure, respiration rate. It's going to work with the pons and control respiration rate as well as other areas of the body. Um, digestion, and uh, heart rate. So once again, so we have the blood pressure is gonna be controlled by here. If you look, this swallows and salivary glands, this is swallowing here. We have the vagus nerve is gonna help with taste and with swallowing also. In fact, normally what happens when the, you go to a doctor and they say to say, ah, they're testing these two nerves right here, the glossopharyngeal and the vagus. Um, so you can see that's gonna help with the digestion the vagus nerve also goes to the heart to control the heart rate. So those are um, all the things that the medulla oblongata does. You can see it's a lot, and this isn't even all of it. This video isn't meant to be complete on it. Um, but for the most part, you can see these are the functions of the medulla oblongata. So thank you for watching.